All right, welcome back. Here we are, you're at the big board. We're playing, we're having fun. We look at uh, board games and in particular, historical simulations and historical recreations of military conflict, i.e. war games. <clears throat> so if you're not interested in that, then you need to just toddle on off and go watch a, uh, a fail video or uh, something to do with the Euro with blocks and sheeples and meeples. Because we're gonna talk about this particular game here, which I have been dying to play for, ooh, I want to call it uh, six or seven years, and I'd seen and heard about this uh, game uh, over the past 10, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, more than likely. Always held a fascination for me. Sorry for the clicking in the background. We've got some wind going on here, and uh, the, uh, there's a filter that is uh, bouncing around in the air conditioner. So what am I talking about? I'm not talking about Operation Star, per se. I'm talking about the SPI Quad uh, for Army Group South. That's four battles. Comes with the Battle of Kiev from uh, 1941, the Battle for Rostov, uh, first Soviet counterattack in 41. Uh, Operation Star, which is what we're playing here, the Soviet Winter Offensive, 43. And last but not least, as I flipped to the very back, 44, the German pocket on the Demper River, Korsun. Four very, very different battles. And the general theme of all of this is, look, uh, whenever you buy a quad, you get one or two good games and the rest are crap. And that's really not been my experience so far. My understanding is that this is one of the least attractive of the games, and I am enjoying it immensely. So much so that I'm talking to you about it on turn, start of turn five, versus waiting till the, the very end, because uh, I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. I want to kind of capture my, my thoughts uh, here and now. So we're not looking at the original boxed version. We're actually looking at a Six Angles magazine from Japan. Their reinterpretation, so I believe they licensed the rights to produce and print the some or all of the SPI games. And the Japanese chaps that did this really took a very straightforward approach when it came to rules reinterpretation. They really didn't go and change very much. But what they did do aesthetically is enhance the maps, enhance the counters, uh, make the fonts a little bit larger, uh, a little softer gradation of coloring, uh, some more information on the on the maps. There's uh, you can see these entra entrance and exit areas on the map. Uh, things to uh, and the the charts on the side are a little easier to read. They've got full color. Uh, tech and uh, sequence of play and all that sort of fun stuff of course it's all in Japanese but nevertheless we can we can get the gist of it and we can uh, uh, play the game the game does also come with English rules this is I believe these are the rules that come with the game so it's all very very well done uh, what what's of note about this particular game system is that it it's I guess for all intents and purposes, it's the victory in the West system in that uh, zones of control lock, there's divisional integrity, so, which will give you a, a doubling of it on attack and defense as the Germans. There are, uh, there are uh, standard supply rules, generally speaking, and it feels very much like your typical victory in the West game without the uh, uncomfortable nuance of a, uh, I think that's a D10 roll for them. Maybe it's a D6 with lots of modifiers, but uh, the, the CRT is a very straightforward, you know, one to three, 10 to one scaled losses. You can uh, take a retreat instead of uh, a step loss. So that's up to you uh, doubling across rivers and and or tripling uh, for defense across rivers and uh, cities will double you and all that sort of fun stuff and mech pays too to go in the woods blah 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 so it's all very very much the same so there's a set of base rules and then there's about two or two and a half or three pages per battle that cover off on the 
the specifics of the battle. So in this particular instance, there's a, a unique circumstance where the Soviets are on the attack and they've been really being given, excuse me, uh, uh, direction by uh, higher echelon and by political p- political officers that uh, it's we're attacking at all costs and we're we're going in and we're staying in and these are the only directions you're allowed to move uh, unless you convert your headquarter uh, unit from offense to defense and you can switch him to defensive mode and then he has a little more flexibility uh, in, in regards to movement but much less flexibility when it comes to uh, attacking and uh, defending and all that sort of fun stuff. He he is somewhat uh, limited by his his activity and behavior. In fact, uh, his attack strength is going to be halved and he will not receive a mechanized movement phase. So that will, that's going to put... uh, that's going to put some salt in your your Wheaties. So... uh, Let's see. I, I, I guess I, I'm just really enjoying a, a fast playing game from SPI for a change. Uh, well, a lot of the games are fast playing, and the SNT magazine games play relatively fast. But of late, I've been playing other magazine games that have required a lot of rules referencing, a lot of looking stuff up, a lot of. Uh, uh, double checking to making sure you've got the right rule. You know, uh, it's it's sometimes it's like you get into a magazine and you you read about movement, but then you go to combat and you realize there's a section in there on overruns and really it's overruns are part of movement and you need to double check there and it gets complicated. So there, there was a point in time where generally speaking, unless you got particularly nuanced and particularly OCD oriented that you could pick up a set of rules for a magazine game, a game as big as Object Objective Moscow, or even, you know, I've got the Next War over here. Next War is kind of like a, a framework for a game. Uh, it, it could do with some enrichment, but it, it has, all the bones are there, and, and the things that matter, the wording is so clear and so precise and so well done that you can just play. So I've played, uh, what, four turns coming and going over the last two or three days. I can sit down, play a turn, move the guys, do the combat, check supply, check combat supply, do the mechanized move, do the cleanup phase, go to the next phase, take a picture, whatever, move on. Uh, It's great. So I'm telling you all these things, you're gonna say, wow, wow, gee, I wanna go get one of these. Well, that's where it kind of sucks, right? You can probably find these battles individually in the, I guess maybe in the S&T magazines. I'm not sure how they were issued. I haven't done the homework on that yet, but um, you're not gonna find the quad for less than 70 bucks if it's punched and probably a hundred bucks if it's unpunched. I've got a copy, I've got this copy, which is punched from six angles. I think this was 40 or $50. And I just had an offer on my armor group South box set unpunched for a hundred bucks, which I politely turned down. So it's hard to find, but I think if you can find S and T magazine games that are kind of part of a series where the rules have been relatively well hashed out and you've got a situation where you know, maybe they're all on the Eastern Front or they're all World War II and then you've got a nice, succinct two, three pages of Chrome, what I would call Chrome or battle-specific rules to help you get through the situation without it all being generic because there is a potential for that, right? There's potential here that I could play four different battles on four different maps with four different sets of counters and kind of not really know whether I'm doing medieval World War II or Space Monkeys, it could all be the same garbage because the rule system is too generic. But I think here we've got a very nice balance of, um, let's just have a telephone call coming in there, sorry about that. So we have a very nice balance of game playability, good quality art and graphics, uh, 
some historical feel. We get to see what's going on a little bit. I'm sure things have gone wildly out of, uh, out of sync around Kharkov and other areas. But uh, that's more tactical, lack of tactical finesse by the Soviet player than, uh, than any uh, lacking of the game system per se. So anyway, thought I'd share this with you. Look forward to talking to you guys soon. I'll be uh, back in touch just as soon as I can with the next game update. Take care.